So let's just go straight and start looking at what we have to learn um, today. So the first thing I want you to know and have in your mind, so you just need to know Excel as an application and you need to know these two things. Excel range and range reference. This is very, very important in your learning Excel. Okay, so let me show you this. You quickly see that we have just taken a part of an Excel sheet here. And all these things are very important because you just see it, you say, okay, this is not formula. Knowing the expression, this is not formula. I, want to, I know formula is the local business. Hey, no. If you're very good with understanding the interface of the spreadsheet itself, I can tell you that 30%, you are now a guru in Excel form formulas and functions because that is what it uses. Let's look at it. We said that a range reference is defined by column, column, and row address. Yes, that's exactly um, uh, that's exactly what it is. So if you look here, if you look here, you would see that I'm trying to show you that this column is a column D, and then this row here, um, this row here is uh, so this row here. So based on this, this cell here, this cell that you see here is cell D6, cell D6, D6. Now I want you to notice this also, that, that the, 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 the column identity, which is this one, comes before the role identity here. So column comes first and then role. Now it's easy. For you to remember this because you find that the alphabet C for column comes before the alphabet arrow, row. So it's easy for you to understand it by, uh, by T and uh, arrow, T and arrow, not arrow and T. So whenever you have to reference a cell, you have to use the cell's ID. So in this case, the cell ID here. D6. So you also have role headers. You also have role headers. For example, this one is a role header. So this one is a role header. In fact, everything here are role headers. One is a role header, two is a role header, and it continues like that. So column headers are alphabet, while role headers are numbers. Okay. Column headers are alphabet, role headers and uh, numbers. You need to know this. And so we have about 16, over 16,000 columns. You see, when it gets to Z, you see, it continues and then it starts from A, 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 B down to A, Z and it could change to B, A, B, B and all of that. So it changes like that. So that's the structure of uh, the spreadsheet. So you can see that this is the row header this time it's the same here. It's very important that you know. Now a lot of people at this point, I must tell them to tell you this about data. Um, that was uh, yesterday there was uh, there was an individual who says that for every sheet he records data for a month. And so for January it has one sheet inside the workbook. And then for February, he goes to another sheet. For March, he goes to another sheet. And I tell them that if you have up to uh, a million rows in a sheet, why go to a different sheet to uh, record for a different month? Because he or she will come back to me tomorrow and say, you know what, the boss says that we should analyze for the whole six months. And I'm having a problem consolidating all of this data into one sheet. So that's what he or she would have done right from the beginning. Now, I'm not telling you that you have to use the entire 1,000 rows, no. but what, what, I'm, what I'm only 
telling you is that you can do your best to use at least half of the capacity of the sheet. And for many of the kind of data that I've seen people storing, they could do that. I mean, a sheet could contain data for the entire year. And so you can easily use pivot tables. Some call it pivot tables, but anyone I call, I just hope you understand. But we can use pivot tables to do analysis. And pivot tables help us to run away from Excel functions and formulas and see, get our answers. So we want to have this knowledge of this interface so that it helps us in carrying out analysis quick and fast. The next thing we should try and understand is you know, uh, 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 referencing uh, ranges. Now, when we say a range, a cell is a range. One, like, like you can see here, we have one cell range here. You get it? We have one cell range here. We have, um, uh, we have a column here, but it's a range also, but it's, it's a range that has more than one cell. So if it's just one cell, we know that it's the column identity and the row identity. Okay? But what of if it is more, what of if it is more than one cell, like we see in this other, in this other case? Okay? So here, if you look at it closely, you would see that it follows the same principle here. It takes the cell address of the first cell, A1, and it uses the colon to indicate that this is from this cell to A5, the last cell. So if you um, go um, to, let me just do some, uh, let, let, let me, I want to just, And so what we're doing here is that we are trying to show this cell up to this one cell. Okay. So what it actually does is that it takes this cell and then it takes this other cell here and then we need to define this column that we have here. So it's not this cell. So assuming I have one, two, um, uh, three, and five. Now I can sum all of this. I can sum all of this in this cell by simply equal to. I'm going to say uh, sum, and I'm just typing in this a1. I'm not selecting anything, so you can see that it has picked a1, and I'm going to put a column here, and I'm going to put a5, and see if it's selected knows that yes this is what I'm taking in. So it is it is always um, a good practice for you to type in your function. A lot of people are taught in Excel training to use this function uh, icon to enter formula. And I tell you that it's a limitation because um, uh, sometimes when you want to enter complex uh, formulas uh, the, the the function with that will not help you to do that accurately, accurately. You need to execute one, come out of it, go to execute another one in, inside. But when you know the paths of the formulas that formula that you want to implement, you just go straight and implement it. You get it. So this is what we're trying to say when we uh, when we talk about uh, when we talk about using Excel uh, ranges. So let's go back to uh, Let's go back to this. So you can now understand what happens in the case of a roll range. Here, it's A1 and then E. E1 here. You see, it uses that to reference this row. Then sometimes we will have that which will have rows and columns. Still, it uses the same principle. 
the first cell here and the last cell to the right hand side will define the range. It's going to define the range. So if I put this in a formula that sum this, it will form everything that we put in this range. So at this point, I expect everybody to understand range reference. If you don't understand range reference, you can be a guru in uh, using Excel functions and formulas to carry out your task. It's very important that you, uh, that you know this. Now we understand the reference, we look at the sheet reference. Now it is not only uh, cells or, or ranges that you can reference. You can reference uh, the sheet. So that's what we want to look at here. And so before doing that, I want you to um, I want you to look at what we have on the screen now. It's something um, it's something related to um, what we already know. We are assuming that we have a word script, we have an output script, and we have an Excel script. So for word script and Excel script, we have houses, and each of them have. Uh, each of them have got uh, addresses. Now, so the question here is, how are we going to reference each of these uh, uh, references? So let's take each of these streets as different sheets inside our workbook, different sheets inside our workbook. So what actually happens is that if I want to reference house A here in World Street, it's going to be World Street and uh, uh, exclamation mark house A4. And so here is going to be Excel Street, exclamation mark, house B2. Now, if you understand this, it's not difficult for you to understand um, how uh, it works inside Excel. You get it? It's not difficult for us to understand that. And I'm going to show you real quick. Okay, so I'm going to stop this. Oh, let me just show you um, the next slide before we go to an actual Excel worksheet and show you what is happening. Okay, so we have a sheet one here. That's the sheet name here. That's sheet one. And then, uh, like I tell you, this can change it because we could call it, we could rename it. You just right click on the sheet name and rename it to something else. And then, uh, that will take another name. But whatever name it takes, they behave the same, same way. Okay? Uh, you can also double click the sheet name and then, and then uh, overwrite and write whatever name you want to give to you. So those are primary to Excel. So, but by the time we want to reference maybe uh, in, in a sheet, in a cell in this sheet, we see that it changes. It's not just A1. It says sheet one. You get it? It says sheet one. Okay. Sorry for that. So we say sheet one and A1 in order to reference everything. This will give us the value that is in uh, A1 here. And so we can do that even if we want to do ranges. So let's just go to an Excel sheet and demonstrate this. So um, I'm going to uh, go back to this. Let's demonstrate it um, here. Um, what I can do is uh, okay. So let's assume that we have uh, this sheet here. I'm, I'm going to zoom in on the sheet here. So we have we have numbers here. So I'm going to come in here and just twenty cell actually. Let me just do here, and I'm going to say that this cell is equal to sheet. And then I put the exclamation mark and I put A1. So, um, let me just do this. Yes. So, okay, I, I was thinking that sheet one. So you can see that it's using the name. It's using the name uh, we have here, range reference, then an exclamation mark. And then it is doing, uh, it, I just hope you see clearly here. So it is using uh, a range 
reference, then it has an exclamation mark, and then it has a. So what we can do is let's assume that you want to sum here. You can actually do a sum, and at this point, just come in here and then select all of them. Excel helps you to put that in there. Excel helps you to put, and if it's just one one function, right? Yeah, Excel uh, sum is a function. If it's just one function you are using here, you can just hit your enter. Especially if you have a cell uh, 2007 and above, I think you can actually do that. So you see it here. Here is the formula that has been implemented, and this is the sum. Of it. So you can you you can actually write functions across sheets. You know, not only on just one sheet. A lot of people just feel that it has to be one sheet, and so they have to create another sheet to compute. No, no. So what it means is that I can have my raw data in one sheet, and I can do summaries in another sheet, so that I can give my boss a, a, a report. All right. So we're back here, and uh, so that's how you can you know across ranges you can enter formula functions and carry out your task. So you can play around with that, and if you have issues, why let me know so that uh, we can 